In the previous video, we designed a MyPhone class uh, with the big three, I call them. The instance variables, a constructor, and a two-string. And we can add much more to this. Uh, one of the first things I'm going to add to this is a multiple argument constructor. Right now, when I create a MyPhone, it sets the values of memory, cost, and carrier to these predefined values. But maybe I want to create a phone and I want to specify what those are when I create it. In other words, in the MyPhone driver... I want to do something like this. I want to say uh, 64 is the gigabytes. Uh, the cost is uh, $99. The carrier is Verizon. And we'll say false is the Wi-Fi. So I can specify some things. So if I try to compile this, it says I can't do this because this, comp this constructor does not exist. I don't have one that takes four, four numbers or strings or booleans. Uh, uh, I only have the one that sets it to default value. So what I can do is, if I go back to the my phone, and I can actually specify those values in a multi-argument, in this case a four-argument constructor. I can say public my phone, and I'll specify that I'm going to give to the phone four parameters uh, when I create it. So I'll say uh, an integer called memory capacity, uh, a double called cost, uh, string called carrier and I'll give it a boolean called is Wi-Fi on. So I can specify these things. One, two, three, and for our constructor. Okay. So as opposed to having these set for me or being predefined or, or hard coded in, I'm going to specify. I'm going to say the memory capacity that I, of the phone is equal to this one, the one that's fed in, the 64 that I had specified in the driver. And the cost of this phone is equal to the cost that I specify here. And the carrier is a new string. Uh, and the boolean, excuse me, is Wi-Fi on equals this is Wi-Fi on. Now, if you look at this, it looks a little bit confusing because you're saying something equals it to itself. And in fact, there are two different variables. This is the one that belongs to the class, and this is just a placeholder representing the number, in this case, the memory capacity, that I'm feeding in. So to make this a little more readable or understandable, we typically do this, literally this. We say this phone's memory capacity, this phone's cost, this phone's carrier, this phone's Wi-Fi on is going to be equal to whatever I feed into it, and this is from the driver. Okay, so let's compile this, all right, and compile that, and it looks like it works now. So now, again, not I'm not specifying a standard uh, um, set of parameters, parameters for the phone. I'm I'm giving what I want it to be. So I'll compile this, I'll close it, and let's run it. And you can see that the phone has uh, those. Now I still have the other one, the default or zero argument constructor. So I'll go over here and create one called my phone. Uh, I'll call it my other cell equals new my phone. So this one still exists. I can create a generic my phone and if I print it out, let me just copy this, print my other cell, okay, save it, compile it. I get two phones. I get the one that I specify that's a Verizon phone for 99 bucks and I have this standard one with these standard values. So uh, depending on what I want to do, I can use the default or zero argument constructor or I can use the for argument constructor. And as long as the number of parameters match and the type, in other words, int, double, string, boolean, as long as I have those in the correct order, everything should work. And then you can uh, test it with uh, by running the two-string method of the um, uh, class.